today we are going to show you how to create a goblin clan. This is also usable as just a baseline video to walk you through the process of getting Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager working. The first thing we're going to need to make a goblin clan, of course, is goblins. With this mod, Fantastical Multiverse, you can actually choose a goblin as your origin character. You'll also see here that there's a lot of other cool choices. You could roll around as a bunch of bugbears. You could... Uh, become, you know, orcs, ASMR, uh, Minotaur. But what we're really interested in here today is the Goblin. Fantastical Multiverse is a pretty complex mod. It has a couple dependencies that it needs. One of these is it needs the 5e spells mod, and you'll also need Baldur's Gate 3 mod fixer, and then you'll also need improved UI. So you'll actually need two files out of the improved UI page, and one of them is going to be improved UI, the base mod, and the second one will be Improved UI Assets. That allows for custom icons. The next thing you're going to need to make the Goblin Clan is we're going to need Party Limit Be Gone. And what this does is it raises the party cap from 4 to 16. This also can raise the multiplayer cap to 8. So there's some additional steps you can do to patch the Baldur's Gate 3 exec file and raise the party limit to eight in multiplayer. So if you have a big group of friends and you all want to play co-op, this is the mod for you. The final thing we're going to need to fill out our goblin clan and fill in the ranks is the recruit any NPC mod. So what this gives you is it gives you two spells that it adds to your origin character. One of them is add or remove, and this allows you to add or remove any NPC to your party or remove them from your party. And the second one is make clone or custom. And what that does is it allows the character to be cloned and create a custom origin origin character. But we're mainly going to be using this to fill in our ranks and recruit more goblins into our little goblin clan here. You'll need all these mods, you'll want to make sure you download these. In addition to that, you'll need two tools. First tool you're going to need is the Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager. The second one you're going to need is the Script Extender. And this allows you to run some of the more complex mods that change how the base game functions. So once you have all of these downloaded, all of these zip files, unpack them all into a folder. So I've already gone ahead and made a Baldur's Gate 3 mods folder here on my desktop. You want to take all these and unzip them to folders. And you'll see they're all unzipped now. And then what you'll want to do is head on into the Baldur's Gate 3 mod manager folder. And you'll see a exec file here called bg3modmanager.exe. And you go ahead and open that up and run it. If there's a new version, go ahead and download that. It'll update automatically for you. So you'll see an interface that looks like this. What you want to do next is anything that's a pack file. For example, you see this is pack file, 5espells.pack. So you want to go ahead and import all your mods using the import option in the mod manager. Once you've imported all the pack files into Mod Manager, uh, you'll see that there is 5e spells, Fantastical Hotfix, Fantastical Multiverse, Remove Multiplayer Character. This is the Recruit Any Character mod. It's just called Remove Multiplayer Character as the pack file here. And then you'll see some overrides down here. So you'll see Improved UI Assets, Improved UI, and Mod Fixer. So what you want to do is take all of these in the Inactive Mods column and drag them over here to the Active Mods column. So once you see that your left-hand column looks like this, you have your overrides, you have your mods, go ahead and hit File, Export Order to Game. Once that's done, you'll see a little note pop up saying Exported Load Order to wherever your mod is, and that will indicate that it was successful. The next thing we'll need to do is install the script extender and install the party limit be gone mod. These are a little different. So you actually have to go into your game folder here. The easiest way to get there is to straight up go into the Steam client, right click manage and hit browse local files and it'll take you right to the game folder. You'll see that there is a folder named bin and a folder named data. So what we're gonna do first is install the Baldur's Gate 3 script extender and all that is is a little DLL file called dwrite.dll. The dwrite.dll file just needs to be dragged into the bin folder, like so. 
and you'll see I have already done this. So make sure that it's in there and you'll see dwrite.dll up here if you've done that properly. Then what you'll want to do is go back up to the main Baldur's Gate 3 game folder here, open the data folder, and this is where you'll want to drag the Party Limit Be Gone mod folder. There's a readme.txt that gives you instructions as well, but you'll take this mods folder and just drag that into the data folder. And once you do that, you'll see it looks like this. You'll see a localization folder and a mods folder. If you want to increase the multiplayer limit, there's some additional instructions in here and a patcher where you'll need to drag the actual game exec files onto this party limit be gone patcher.bat file. And that will automatically patch your exec files in order to increase the multiplayer limit to eight. What we want to do now is test everything and make sure that it worked out okay. All right, so. Here's how you test out the Party Limit Be Gone mod. Now, you note that I have four people already in my group, so what you need to actually do to test this mod is you need to dismiss one character. We'll make Karlak eat some dirt. That should reset the limit within the game. Then you go ahead and recruit two characters. All right, and you'll see that we've got five characters. So we know that the Party Cat limit is now raised. So the next thing we need to do is test out the Recruit Any NPC mod. So we've got Mizora and we've got Duke Raven Guard sitting here. Now you'll notice in your actions that some new options have appeared. There's Add and Remove and there's Make Clone or Custom. So we're going to see if we can add and remove Mizora. And what do you know? She's on our side. We got Mizora. Let's add Raven Guard. Same thing, just hit add, boom. And what? We've got Raven Guard on our side as well. And hey, look, I'm controlling Duke Raven Guard. Or I can take Mizora out for a spin. And what? She's got spells. She's got spells. She's teleporting over here. What? Oh my god, Mizora, what are you even doing? So, we know that those mods all work. The last tricky one we need to check is to make sure we can make a goblin. Head to the main menu, we're going to hit new game. And once you start a new game, you will of course be brought to the character generator. We have our origin characters of course, but we click over on race and what's this? We have all new options. So we have orc, we have asmr, we have genasi, what? Bugbear doesn't seem to work right. Now, some of these don't all work properly, and it's because there's another dependent mod that improves the bodies that currently isn't supported due to patch number 9 coming out earlier this month. But in the future, I'm pretty sure that this will work perfectly once again. But what we really want to see is Goblin. And the Goblins are actually pretty well featured. They even have race features, like in the 5e book, where you get Fury of the Small and Nimble Escape. And uh, you can even alter your goblins a little bit. Even like randomize your guys. So yeah, if you want weird <laughs> weird goblin hysterian clown or uh, yeah, this guy looks good. You can make your goblin commandos. And you can go on through and you can recruit all the goblins that you can hold and dismiss them at any time. Have fun with your goblin journey and thanks for sticking around to watch this mod video.